do just just start it doesn't have to be big it doesn't have to be bold it doesn't have to be exciting yeah you just have to start welcome to the badass dad podcast kdh here on the microphone in the iron yeti studios knocking the door down uh for 2021 right around the corner and super excited to have my friend uh alex racy alex how you feeling today pretty good pretty good Hey, uh, Alex, we, we got to hear your story back on episode 53, and today, which is really uh, take two of this, um, want to get a little bit more into kind of the heart of what you're doing right now and the passion for it. But uh, to give everybody just a little introduction, uh, you know, you spent a, a couple of decades, a couple of minutes uh, as special operations, and uh, then uh, make, make your, wor- your move out to the civilian world. Tell us about special operations a little bit. Special Operations was awesome. I started my career uh, in 1992 in 2nd Ranger Battalion. I think we talked about this a little bit in 53. Um, I was a ranger for a long time. I think it was about four months before I got kicked out of there for an accidental discharge on a range. Spent a few years in long-range surveillance units at I-Corps and 82nd Airborne Uh Division. So I was Division Lurse and Corps Lurse. Then I went back to selection for special operations, and I spent over 17 years at the special mission unit down at Bragg in North Carolina. So not a snake eater, not, not special eater. forces. Okay. No, never got my long tab. So um, special operations houses rangers, special mission units, special forces, some other interesting assets in the Army. Um so yeah, I don't want don't want people to think I was a Green Beret. Okay. I hung out with a lot of Green Berets, hang out with a lot of Green Berets still, but I was never a uh, snake eater. But you still got to blow things up, right? I did. Yeah. yeah. Got to blow things up. <laughs> my back, <laughs> my neck, my ankles. Still paying for it a little bit now, huh? Yeah, but it was it was it was absolutely worth it. It was it was a lot of fun. Well, we're gonna do a, a four part series. We're gonna do the introduction to, right now. And then we're going to be talking about really your heart, your passion, where you are right now, which is in performance. And, uh, you know, you, you get a great opportunity to coach clients as well through that process. And, uh, and, and I know you're, um, you are an entrepreneur cause you're, you're doing it, but you, you have a full-time job as well, but you're making your move that direction. So we're, you're going to be sharing some insights, um, into, you know, the, the eating, sleeping and moving, which are, you know, the, the three legs to the stool. Um, for your program. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, that we're going to give the overview right now on this episode. Um, but, you know, here we are in, you know, 2021 when this comes out and people are going to be setting New Year's resolutions. They'll have forgotten New Year's resolutions, which we both agree really do not work. Um, but let's talk about why, why now? Like, why is it important now? And what are people going to get out of, um, you know, listening to us over here the next, you know, few episodes? So I think a lot of people care about their performance and they just start thinking about it and planning against it and then they get overwhelmed or they get busy or they have a plan to change the world on January 1st and on the 2nd something happens and their plan to change the world gets a little sideways Mm -hmm. and they miss, you know, that second effort. And then they quit. So, you know, my thing is um, resolutions as far as I'm going to start on Monday. I'm going to start on the 1st of January. Um, I think resolutions are are fine, but just make your resolution to have a resolution to start every day with a focus for performance. And if you, you know, in my, the way I try to get people thinking about it is around my three pillars, which is eat, sleep, move, and how those can affect each other if you if you do a little extra processing on the front end and you Mm -hmm. think about hey how how can my eat benefit my sleep and my move and how can my sleep benefit my my move and my eat and how can my um move best affect my my eat and sleep as well so you know they all they all can can help each other out if you design your day the right way and that's kind of how i try to help people think about it and make improvements more quickly by not just, you know, the guy who is killing it in the gym and he's getting three hours of crappy sleep yeah. and he's eating like crap is wasting his time in the gym, mm-hmm. in my opinion, yep. or a, a good piece of it, right? You know, the 
he he might be realizing twenty percent effective effectiveness from that workout versus you know if he if he did less in the gym and spent some of that focus time on making sure his food's prepared right and his sleep is right, he would see better benefits with less effort. Well, in, in, in your reckoning journal, you know, at the very beginning, you have a great little quote by Victor Frankl. You talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, again, anybody who knows me is like, he read a book by Victor Frankl. Yeah. <laughs> so man search for meaning. It, it, it basically the one the one sentence that jumped out of me and you know Victor Frankl spent uh, lost his entire family uh, in the concentration camps and still came out of it with with knowing that hey they can take everything away from me but my will to live and and my mind and and he came out in in the grand scheme of things in in a much better place than a lot of yeah. people who made it through that ordeal. Um, he's got a quote about uh, well why don't you read it exactly so I don't mess it up. All right, let me get it back out here. So he, he says the the immediate influence of behavior is always more effective than words. Right. So I mean, this is the badass dads podcast, right? So mm-hmm. how many times have we told our kids to do something, but then we demonstrate the exact opposite, right? Exactly. We 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 say, "Hey, don't do that." And then within 10 minutes, we're doing what we just told them not to do. And it might be something as simple as, hey, get get off your phone. What are you doing? And they're looking at you going, I haven't seen that phone out of your hand <laughs> in seven months. Right. Right. Yep. Since March when COVID hit, I haven't, you know, you've had that, that phone has grown. You know, it's, I'm surprised it actually detaches from your hand, mom or dad or whatever the case may be. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about demonstrating the right thing to do versus always talking about it. And I think that's super powerful. And maybe it's because it's so simple, right? Hey, let's, let's stop talking about all this great stuff we're going to do. Let's just do it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I love the, the way you position yourself, you know, really as performance, I don't know, he's performance coach, performance expert, uh, you know, God of all performance or something like that. (laughs) Um, definitely not God of anything. Um, not even my own mind. I can't even control that <laughs> very s- small, uh, small uh, power unit between my ears. Um, I like performance, and and I think um, I geek out on it. So, like when you and I met, it's not like uh, you had to corner me to get me to start talking about all this stuff. I think you said maybe three words, and then you had to listen to me for twenty minutes, <laughs> which is how long we were in the sauna. So it was perfect, yeah. right? Um, I love this stuff. I have a lot of deficiencies in my own life that I'm always working on. And I find that, you know, the same things I need to work on are what most other people need to work on as well. So if I'm, if I'm a few years ahead of people in my journey, I will also say that everybody I work with, and I just have a handful of clients that I work with regularly. And then, you know, the one-offs where I just have a long conversation, maybe with somebody, I always learn from them. Mm. You know, so that's, that's really the cool part. It's, it's being able to help someone and then maybe it's not even immediate, but within, within a day or two, usually something's coming back from those conversations. And I'm like, oh, that's, I'm them. I'm, mm. I have the same issues they do. Yep. And what did I tell them to do? You know, it's like, it's self-coaching, right? It's, um, it's funny because now that I've been in corporate America Spent 25 years in the military. Um, I'm a CrossFit coach. I've coached in official CrossFit gyms. I've coached in garages, all that stuff. I try to, you know, I think of myself as a dad, as a coach, as a husband, as a coach. That That's just a dabble, though. I don't do much coaching of my wife. That never, <laughs> that never seems to work out. Uh, she, I like to uh, see her find her own way, Carly. Um, but I think... Um, it's funny because it's all, it doesn't matter what you call it. Oh, I'm a performance coach. Oh, I'm a business coach. I'm a leadership coach. I'm a pastor. It's all life coaching. Exactly. It really is. Yep. Um, so, you know, even even the people who are like, oh, I'm going to turn this off. He said life coach. I mean, I even heard you talking to a Navy SEAL recently that right. said he was a life coach exactly. as one of, his, one of his things. And I'm like, yeah, of course he is. Because anybody who's 
led men in combat or women in combat or men and women in combat. I mean, you know, they hopefully have a little bit of a life coach personality somewhere in there Yeah, for, for the good of all. Well, and I would absolutely agree with you on that because, you know, as badass dads, you know, we all want to perform better. We all want to have more energy, you know, be more present, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, and so, you know, I love the program that you have because I really believe you're, you're, the program that you have is simple. I think that it is sustainable so we can continue to do it like longevity. And, and uh, from a nutrition standpoint, it is satiating. So I'm not going to like die, you know, that's, that's one of the issues that I've had with diets is just going, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to have to suffer through this. And there's really not that suffering. Now, there is some adjustments for sure, but I want to ask you this just, just to start with, you know, in this introduction section, I mean, you've had an opportunity uh, in leadership in both military, you know, corporate America in, in your performance coaching, you you're now seeing different types of people. And I know you kind of have three categories of people that you've mostly coached. And I think a lot of us are going to fit in one of these. So give us those three, you know, those three types of people that you run across. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as I've, as I've started, um, doing more focused coaching work, a lot of my clients are executives, mm -hmm. uh, very successful people in whatever domain they, they chose to become proficient in at life. And and I see, I kind of define the three personalities as kick the can, head in the sand, and all good. And so you've got kick the can. That's the, that's the individual who was probably an athlete in high school and maybe college. They join the corporate world and they pour all of that same focused effort into their job. They continue to eat like an athlete. They continue to get horrible sleep like an 18-year-old. <laughs> And they aren't doing any of the movement required to burn all those calories. So they gain a bunch of weight. Uh, they're full of inflammation. And they say, hey, you know what? Once I make CEO, once I add a, two more zeros to my IRA or retirement account or whatever, yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to refocus on performance and get back in shape and get better sleep and eat better. And, you know, they just keep kicking that can down the road. I've got a really mental good mental picture of, of, of a Snoopy cartoon right now. Okay. Um, for that one. And then head in the sand is just the person who wants to, we kind of already talked about them a little bit, you know, they're like, Hey, new year's, I am going to clean up my act in 2021. Uh, they start digging into what they're going to do and just, just looking at everything, CrossFit, P90X, whole 30, 60 day challenge, Nutrisystems, uh, Magic pills that, you know, guarantee you'll burn five pounds of fat in your sleep every night. Um, six minute abs. Six minute abs. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I do. My abs are so routine. It's so effective. <laughs> I do it in three minutes. I have three minute abs. Um, but yeah, all of that. It, it's too much. There's, they're overwhelmed and yeah. and yeah, like an ostrich. They just stick their head in the sand and say, I'm not even going to worry about this. I'm not even going to think about it. And then they all good, which is probably... If I had to guess, I'd say most people on, you know, listening to this podcast would, uh, would identify with all good. And I, I am definitely more susceptible to this when I'm not trying to always see what's new and what the science is saying and, and what's working, you know, even before they can prove it out in the science. But it's, it's the, hey, I have, I have protocols for what and how I eat and how I work out and I still feel like crap. And I still sleep like crap and I am full of inflammation and my knees hurt all the time. My shoulders hurt all the time. I'm a bear to be around, uh, but I have protocol. So I'm all, you know, I'm all yeah. good. This is as good as it gets. Yep. And, and there's, you know, maybe their protocols are from 1983 mm. as opposed to 2019. And so maybe we can say, Hey, let's, you know. Low fat, high carb diets aren't maybe where it's at. Mm. Let's let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, and so I, I would just echo with you there, just going, listen, um, if you want to increase your performance, you want greater mental clarity, you want more energy, you want to be more present, um, you, you want to make more money, you want to have a better relationship, you want to have a better sex life. I mean, the, these are some of the areas that we're going to be talking about here. And, you know, I think one of the biggest hurdles that people have to overcome, and maybe the beginning of the year, people don't have to deal with this as much, but it's what stops people so much are just the excuses 
that they tell themselves over and over and over again, or they go, well, I tried that once and you know, it didn't work, you know, and it, so they don't give enough time for it. So how do you address those issues for people? Well, I've had, I've had people say, Hey, I, you know, how fast can I lose 60 pounds? And, and let's say that's, that's a person who's starting to work with me and they weigh 260 pounds. I'm like, okay, you want to lose 60 pounds. You want to weigh 200 pounds. The next question I'm going to ask is when was the last time you weighed 200 pounds? And, you know, it might be that they don't even have enough fingers and toes to count those years. And they're like, oh, well, that would have been when I was a freshman in college and I graduated high school in 1989. So that would have been about 30 years ago. I'm like, well, if, if the last time you weighed your goal weight was 30 years ago, let's not try to get back there in six months. Let's, let's just focus on, um, you know, as far as the whole body composition thing, I think, I think the, the weight loss is kind of at the tail end of, of, of what I like to focus on. I want people to have good energy. I, I want them to be much less inflamed, inflamed, excuse me, or, you know, no inflammation at all in their body. I don't want, I want them to be satiated. As you said, I don't want them to have a eat protocol that they're always hungry. So not being hungry, not being inflamed, having good energy are priorities one, two, and three. Priority four is body composition changes. I love that. And I mean, the, the, when we started having our, our sauna conversations, you know, a few years ago, one of the greatest benefits that I've felt is that I've stopped fighting against my body. Like I felt like anytime I try to diet or even work out or I had, you know, a certain protocol that I was going to, it was me fighting against my body and learning to work with my body. So I know we're going to, you know, delve into each of these, uh, three areas, eat, sleep, and move. Um, but let's, let's, let's wrap up this with, why now is the perfect time to start? The, uh, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today. Well, maybe not today in Colorado because the ground's <laughs> frozen, but you know what I mean. So, so you have to, um, so today, if, if you have this big design, uh, whenever you're listening to this, it could be two years from now in July you know, do something that day. If it, it might be something as simple as, Hey, it's three in the afternoon. I just listened to this guy talk about shorten, you know, eating less hours of the day, shortening my food clock. It's, it's three o'clock. I'm not going to eat any more calories today. You know, that's it. You've started. You started that very moment. You listened to the podcast. If you're 10 minutes into listening to this podcast with your feet propped up in your living room uh, on December, 31st, 2020, push pause, put your shoes on, go outside and listen to the rest of the podcast while you're walking around your neighborhood. Do just, just start. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be bold. It doesn't have to be exciting. Yeah. You just have to start. Just take action now. I absolutely love that. So we'll do this next, next se uh, segment we're going to be doing is going to be on eating. So take a quick break right here. And hey, I want to thank you guys so much for listening to the Badass Dad podcast. Um, hit subscribe, listen, leave us a comment, and uh, you, you will definitely get a ton out of these next three episodes as well. Hey guys, just want to thank you so much for listening to the Badass Dad podcast. Uh, we do need your help though. Um, a couple different things that, that we can use. We, we want to grow our podcast and our message out there. We are getting so much great feedback from you guys, but we need your help. So we want to make it into the top 10. So if you could please, I mean, share, I guess sharing the podcast is a huge, huge benefit. Um, it, also, if you'll comment. So if you'll leave us a comment, like leave us a review um, and some five stars would be great. Uh, the other thing is if you have a subject you'd love us to cover, maybe there's something you, you, you know, you like the subject shows or an interview, or if there's someone you want us to interview, if you could communicate with us. Us, you can hit me up at kdh at badad.org. So that's kdh at badad.org. Or you can go to our Instagram, which is Badass Dads Podcast, and I leave us a direct message there. And I'd love to interview people, love to hit the subjects you guys want to hear more about. Thank you so much for helping us grow.